Collecting and visualizing sensor data is one of the most popular applications of microcontrollers. In today's video, we're going to create a web interface to visualize temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. We'll use a Wi-Fi capable microcontroller to run Arduino software that we'll build step by step. Let's get started. The plan for today is to use the ESP8266 to talk to the BMP180 temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure sensor. Then we're going to write some code that will allow us to run a web server on the ESP8266. Then we're going to add a web page to the web server so that it can be sent to any client that makes a request. After that, we're going to add bidirectional communication between the server and the client using WebSockets. Lastly, we'll add the ability to the web page to control the rate at which data is collected. I'm going to be using the Wemos D1 Mini development board for the ESP8266. I love working with these boards because of their small form factor and the wide availability of shields allow me to work on projects without doing much wiring. I'll leave a link in the description of the video so that you can check them out in my little shop on Amazon. I'll stack the two boards together and then connect them over USB to my computer. And then I'll open the Arduino IDE. Make sure you install the USB drivers for the development board that you're using as I've shown in other videos. I'll save a new sketch onto my desktop and I'll call the file bmp180 underscore GUI. The first thing I'll do is go through the library manager to install the bmp180 and the WebSockets library. I'll then use include statements to add the libraries to my sketch. I'll start with the ESP8266 ones that will allow me to connect to the internet and also run a web server. Then the WebSockets library, as well as the BMP181. Lastly, I'll include the ticker library, which will allow me to use a timer. With the libraries included, I'll start by writing the code that will let me talk to the BMP180 and get data from it. I'll instantiate an object of the ticker class that I'll call timer. Then I'll instantiate an object that will allow me to talk to the BMP180 sensor. I'll call the begin method of the class and then use the timer object to run the function get data every five seconds. I'll go ahead and define the get data function next. For now, it'll simply print out a reading of the temperature as collected by the sensor. I'll also need to initialize the serial communication by calling the begin method of the built-in serial object using a baud rate of 115200. I'll go ahead and select the port and the board for my particular setup and hit upload to try out the code. Once that's done, I'll open up the serial monitor and verify that the data is in fact coming in. Now that we're able to collect data from the sensor, let's go ahead and set up the web server. The first step I'll need to do is connect to the internet. As usual, I'll define two character pointers to store the SSID and the password of my Wi-Fi network. Then I'll use the begin method of the Wi-Fi object to try to establish a connection. I'll use a while loop to give it time to establish the connection and for debugging purposes, I'll print out periods onto the serial monitor. Assuming that everything goes according to plan, I'll simply print out a new line for readability. Then I'll go ahead and print the IP address which we'll need to access the web server that we're going to set up. I'll go ahead and upload the code to test that I can in fact connect to my local network. Once I'm able to connect to the internet, 
I can write the code to run a web server on the ESP8266. I'll create an instance of the ESP8266 web server class that I'll name server. I'll run its begin method in the setup function and its handle client method in the loop function. We can now focus on writing a web page that will be sent to any device that's making a request to the web server. As I usually do, I'll define a character array variable that I'll name web page. Because of the size of the web page, I wanna make sure it gets stored in flash memory, so I'll use the keyword modifier progmem. Then I'll also use the string literal notation to make my life easy when writing out the code for the web page. In the page itself, I'll include the HTML tags the body tags and within the body I'll simply include a diff element that'll contain a canvas that we'll use later but I'll leave it like this just to test things out real quick. Lastly I'll define a route so that when devices request the top root path of the server it calls an anonymous function that will return the page. To do that, I'll use the send underscore p method of the server object to return a code 200, a type of text HTML, and the web page itself. I'll go ahead and upload the code to test it out. Once that's done, I'll open up a serial monitor and I'll copy the IP address. Then I'll launch a new window of my preferred browser and navigate to the top root path. Notice that even though the page is blank, if we use the developer tools, we can see all the different tags that we included in the web page. Now that we have a page that is being served, we can add the WebSockets side of things. We'll start with the web server side of the WebSockets. To do that, I'll create an instance of the WebSocket server class that I'll name WebSocket. The socket itself will be running on port 81. In the setup function, I'll run the begin method of the WebSocket object. I'll also run the onEvent method that will call a function anytime data is sent from the client to the server over the WebSocket. I'll name the function WebSocket event, and because of the function's prototype, it needs to have four parameters. For now, the definition I'll leave empty. Next, I'll go back to the getData function. Here, I want to grab the data from the sensor, format it in a way that's easy to understand, and for that, I'll be using JSON formatting. With the data formatted, I'll go ahead and use the broadcast txt method of the WebSocket object to send that JSON string to the WebSocket. I'll need to run the loop method of the WebSocket object within the loop function so that things work out correctly. Now that the server is posting those measurements to the WebSocket, we can include JavaScript code in our web page to get that data and display it on the page. I'll use the script tags to start writing out the JavaScript code and I'll use a function that I'll call init that will be run whenever the page is loaded. I'll define a variable that I'll name WebSocket and I'll define it as an instance of the WebSocket class running on port 81. Then I'll use the onMessage method to get the event data from those measurements that are being posted by the server and parse the JSON formatted data to be able to display it on the page. For now, I'll simply log them to the console to verify that everything is working. I'll go ahead and upload the code, go back to my browser window, and check out the output of the console. And I can see the JSON formatted data being logged because of the JavaScript code that we included on the page. The goal of our web page is to actually plot the data. To do that, we're going to be using a JavaScript library called Chart.js. Even though we can download the entire library from the GitHub repository, 
there is a much easier way of including it in our web page. We'll add a head section and using the script tags, we can use a CDN URL so that the library is dynamically loaded whenever the web page is served. However, we need to make sure that the ESP8266 is connected to the internet so that it can dynamically load the library onto the page. With the library loaded, we can use the canvas element to display a graph of our data. To do that, we'll use a new variable that I'll call dataplot, and we'll define that variable to be an instance of the chart class that was included with the library. It needs a few parameters, the first one being the canvas that we define, and we'll simply get it by using its ID. Then, a few options to configure the type of chart that we'll be using. Initially, it'll be empty, so it'll have no labels and no data in its data set. For the title, I'll simply say temperature. And just for demo purposes, I'll give it a border color and no fill. Now, instead of logging the data to the console, we'll want to add it to the chart. For the x-axis, I want to use a timestamp for when the data was sent to the WebSocket. I'll use the built-in date class to create a new instance that I'll call today. And I'll use the different methods to get the hours, the minutes, and the seconds and I'll create a string that I'll name t. I'll use a new function that I'll define that will take the x value and the y value of the measurement. Remember that as we saw before, the data is formatted in JSON, so we can use the dot notation to access the actual value of the measurement. I'll go ahead and define the addData function we can access the x values of the plot by using the following dot notation. So we'll use the push method to add to the very end the label that is passed to the function. Similarly, we can access the y values with the following dot notation, and we'll also use the push method to add the measurement value. Lastly, we can call the update method so that the new data is displayed. Let's go ahead and upload the code to test things out. If we refresh the page, we can see the data being plotted. As expected, there's a little bit of variability from measurement to measurement, in the order of a tenth of a degree. If I place my finger on the sensor, then I can actually see some drastic changes in the order of a couple of degrees. As you can see, having a fixed data collection rate is not very ideal. So as an exercise, I'm going to add a slider that will let me control how fast or how slow that data is being collected. I'll create a new diff element and I'll just separate it by using a horizontal rule. The diff element will include an input of type range and for the values, I'll just say that I want to collect data between once a second and every 10 seconds. I'll start with our default value of every 5 seconds. I'll give it an ID. And whenever the value of the slider changes, I want to make sure it calls a JavaScript function that I'll define. And I'll name it send data rate. I'll give it a label to display the actual value of the slider. Because the initial value is to collect data every 5 seconds, the rate is actually 0.2 Hz. So now we can define the send data rate function. I'll define a variable called data rate that will contain the value of the slider. I'll use the send method of the WebSocket object to send it to the server. I'll also update the label on the page. Then we can go back to the server side of things and as we said before, do something with the data. In the WebSocket event function, 
we can check the data. You can be as thorough as you want. I'll simply verify that it's of text type. And because it's being passed as a string, I'll make sure to convert it to an actual float number. Then I can use the timer object to adjust the rate at which data is being collected as specified by the new data rate. So I'll use the detach method followed by the attach method with the new data rate. Let's go ahead and upload the code. Refresh our web page. And if we select the fastest rate of one Hertz, we can see the data coming in a lot quicker than our default value of every five seconds. One problem with this is that if enough seconds pass, then the graph will become very convoluted. And as you might expect, that'll make our browser run incredibly slowly. So the last thing I want to do is control the maximum number of data points that are being displayed on the web page. I'll define a new variable that I'll name max data points and I'll just set it to 20. That'll be the maximum number of data points that'll be displayed at any given point. Then I'll use a new function that I'll name remove data where I'll use the shift method of the arrays in JavaScript to get rid of the first measurement of the array. We do it for both the x-axis and the y-axis. And inside the add data function, if the number of measurements is greater than our maximum number of data points, we call the remove data function. We can upload the code and test it out. Refresh the page. And to make things quicker, just set it to the maximum data rate of once per second. And after 20 measurements, we can see that the first one is being shifted out. It's always fun to mess around a little bit with the measurements to make sure everything is working as expected. And it is. So there we have it. We've successfully built a graphical user interface to display measurements from the BMP180 sensor using WebSockets. If you like my videos, I invite you to go to my Patreon page and chip in a buck or two. It really helps me put in more time and make more videos, release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. I'm also very active on social media, so I encourage you to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and you can ask me questions or suggest what should be the next topic I should do on a video. And a lot of people have been using the community tab of the channel, so you can jump on there as well. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.